Hi, I'm Aura Murphy, President of eSmog Responders International, and I'm pleased to present to you today the inventor of the state-of-the-art Willowtronic products, German physicist and naturopath Walter Laufs. Walter, many thanks for joining us today. Please share with us what got you started to do your research into the area of electrosmog and consequently to develop your products. Your question takes me back to my youth when I started to take an avid interest in natural science and physics. As I grew older, I started to get a real hang of it, so to speak, and my research would increasingly include the subject of electrosmog, or e-smog, which was not discussed in the public domain at the time. Based on my research, I soon realized that examination of biological systems of the human, animal or plant kingdom needs to include looking at possible issues from an electromagnetic viewpoint. I've always been convinced that interferences in a biosystem's electromagnetic processes will inevitably lead to health consequences. The untimely death of my first wife, Margaret, made this clear to me in no uncertain terms. Her doctors were quick to confirm that the cause of her death was a total collapse of her immune system. This was when I realized that a biosystem must never be upset, which is exactly what eSmog does. eSmog upsets and confuses the biosystem. I then met my second wife, Waltraud, who used to run a clinic for natural treatments. And it was there I was given an opportunity to look at my physical knowledge and apply it to a large number of medical experiments, which spanned the most part of eight years and included a vast number of volunteers. It was during those years of continuous tests and experimentations that I realized that e-smog severely compromises the immune system, which in turn is bound to entail all manner of disease, including serious conditions, even death. You just mentioned electrosmog or e-smog for short. What does e-smog stand for? What does it mean? E-smog is a newly coined term. It's a made-up word using elements from electro, smog and fog, thus denoting its ubiquitousness, its all-pervading presence, regardless of where you are on the planet, literally. E-smog doesn't have borders. You see, the problem with EMFs, or electromagnetic frequencies, is that they cannot be perceived via the sensory system, meaning taste, smell, sound, touch or vision, which means that people are exposed to EMFs 24-7. People are at a loss to protect themselves from the consequences of EMFs for the simple fact that they just don't know what to protect themselves from. It's as simple as that. As it turns out, the industry prefers to keep a low profile when it comes to educating the masses regarding e-smog so as not to create a mass panic. Everybody talks about stress these days. What exactly is stress? Could you briefly expound on that? I can certainly expound on that subject, but not briefly, unfortunately. Due to the valuable efforts of world-renowned Canadian stress researcher Hans Sale, who is the author of a vast amount of literature on the subject, stress research is what it is today. He coined the terms eustress, denoting so-called good stress, and de-stress, or negative stress. Originally, the term stress was borrowed from physics, denoting that materials are tested for their consistency and resilience. The same thing happens in the body. In a stressful situation, the body is challenged to deal with assaults it was not originally designed to deal with. Confronted with stress, the body excretes hormones to protect itself. However, these stress hormones will need to be balanced and compensated for at some point, which is where the fight or flight concept comes in. In the case of ESMOC, however, we can't dodge from it, no matter how hard we try. And since people today have not yet been educated into dealing with e-smog, they will inevitably end up with some sort of health issue in the long run, which in turn may lead to serious illnesses. As you can see in the e-smog arena, everything is closely linked with each other. On our website at esmog-responders.com, we talk a lot about information exchange, would you please explain to us what information exchange has got to do with e-smog? Sure. What you and I are doing here is a perfect example of information exchange. And this is exactly how the body works. The human body is made up of plus minus 80 trillion cells and each and every cell is in a constant state of communication with any and all of the other cells. We're looking at a humongous information package here which is being processed every second. 
Every second, billions of information segments are shared. The minute this information flux is disrupted, we're looking at a consequence or irritation. Obviously, these irritations will eventually result in a compromised immune system. Let's bear in mind that at this point, the body is not sure whether or not to react. If we had the time to go deeper into the subject matter, I'd like to show you that e-smog is absorbed by the skin receptors, or skin sensors, and then processed by the central nervous system, leaving positive or negative information in its wake, so to speak. ...über das zentrale Nervensystem weitergeführt wird und dann eben dort positiv oder negative Informationen hinterlässt. Walter, please share with us how your products work. This is one of our most asked questions. I believe it is. My products work on the basis of a physical principle called destructive interference. This term denotes the superimposition of wave mountain and wave valley, meaning they cancel each other out, that the information is neutralized. During the research stage and subsequent medical experimentations, it soon became evident that our patients were severe stress sufferers. So what we did was look at the frequency and the amplitude, which didn't get us anywhere. By the way, it is prohibited to tamper with the frequency. When a telephone company purchases a frequency range, which doesn't come cheap, it won't allow anyone to change that frequency range. Obviously, changing the cell phone's amplitude was not the solution either, as it would automatically increase the transmission power. So I needed to look elsewhere for the causal conditions, which was when I realized that this had to be stress. Back to what I said earlier regarding information exchange. Information is modulated into the wave carrier. This modulated information can be likened to impulse packages with a pulsation frequency close to that of the human body. This is causing a problem for the biosystem. It doesn't know whether or not to react, which in turn causes stress. The body's own information system must not be tampered with from outside sources. If it is, this will throw the body into a great deal of confusion or imbalance, which is the precursor for disease manifestation. Was ist jetzt? Muss ich jetzt? Muss ich jetzt nicht funktionieren? Und das macht wiederum diesen Stress. Und diese Information darf von außen natürlich nicht gestört werden, wie schon gesagt. Dann muss es zwangsweise zu Irritationen im Gesundheitsbereich kommen. Würden Sie sagen, Ihre Produkte... Would you say your products reduce EMFs? No, they don't. What my products are designed to do is to reduce the stress factor caused by e-smog, thus providing relief for the immune system and reactivating the body's self-regulatory properties. By way of the process of destructive interference combined with my iHIT technology, the negative information contained in e-smog is neutralized. Reduced stress levels are indicative of a decrease in causal conditions, increased energy levels and well-being, and stabilization of the immune system. With all this talk about e-smog and its possible health risks, one can't help but wonder why manufacturers don't equip their mobile phones with an e-smog protection device as a standard feature. I believe that vested interests will keep that from happening for some time to come. Cell phone manufacturers and the electronics IT industries work hand in hand and have been walking on thin ice from the word go, so much so that they can't turn back without putting themselves in a real bind. If they were to as much as insinuate today that the evidence produced by thousands of studies worldwide could possibly be valid, meaning that e-smog does pose health risks, it would trigger a mass panic. This is why I said that vested or economic interests are given priority over public health. Also, the majority of the people won't be able to exist without their mobile phones and we'd possibly see markets crumble, including the IT markets. We've created a juggernaut, a monster, a false god, and now we need to find a way to live with it. And the way to do that is to protect ourselves from assaults. Let's choose to be better safe than sorry. In closing, and on a personal note, Walter, if you had a wish or a message, what would that be? Martin Luther King, ein, der 1963 in seiner wohl bekanntesten Rede gesagt hat, I have a dream. In his famous speech of August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King said that he had a dream, talking about his visions of the future. During the years, I too have developed a vision and a dream. I have a dream. 
for scientists of all faculties to join forces in an effort to conduct independent research without any industry interference whatsoever. I have a dream for industry to rearrange its list of priorities, putting the well-being of people first and profits second, and acknowledging the fact that today's technologies pose very real health risks for humankind, instead of playing down people's fears for those technologies through miscommunication and economic agendas. I have a dream for established scientists conducting research in scientific borderlands to no longer see their reputation compromised. I have a dream for private researchers, even if they don't hold an academic title, to be given the opportunity to publish their findings in peer-reviewed literature, for it to be discussed in the public domain. This is what I'd like to see happening in the future. Thank you very much, Walter. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us.